Stephen A. brought this up last week. If LeBron this year gets through, he didn't say, I'll, I'll add to it a little bit. If he gets through two of the following teams, Jazz, uh, um, Suns, Clippers, and everyone's healthy, on his way to a finals where he meets a Nets big three and beats that big three in Brooklyn, Stephen A. said he might have to reevaluate. I'm with him. Now, I don't expect him to. That's one of the reasons I'd have to reevaluate. I don't think that anyone's going to beat the Nets' big three if those guys are playing together, um, all three of them. They're all healthy. I don't think they can do it, but that's the point. That would be the second time in LeBron's career that he slayed the monster. Michael Jordan never had to slay the monster because he was the monster, right? He was the monster. And by the way, Chris, it's a misconception about Jordan that, oh, what about all the other years? Every time, every single time in his prime, Jordan was on a team with a single other All-Star. They won the championship in under seven games, right? So, well, what about the Pistons? He hadn't played with another All-Star his whole career. Scottie Pippen made his first All-Star team. Still not in his prime, but he made the All-Star team. Pippen had a migraine game seven against the defending champion Pistons, mm -hmm. scored two points in 40 minutes. They lost. In other words, Jordan didn't have his All-Star again. Following year, he had his All-Star. Never again didn't win the finals in under seven games. Right. His peak is the highest of all time. And I think when we say greatest ever, if you sustained your peak long enough, we're not just weighing career accomplishments. We mean who was the best when they were at their best. That's MJ. But at a certain point, if LeBron is coming close enough to MJ's peak and sustaining it three times as long, if LeBron for the second time in his career, remember, I don't think he'll be able to do this. That's why I have to give it to him if he does. First, he beats a 73-win Warriors team when it looked to me like Steph's the best player in the game. Not in any other era, but in this era, the way the rules are, the way he's shooting, it's Steph. LeBron screamed on him like he was his dad at one point. Remember that? <laughs> Steph had his head down, walked away, and LeBron won the finals in seven games at Oracle. His team, partly because of him, held defensively, held the Warriors, the greatest half-court offense ever, last four minutes, 22 seconds, at home, game seven. Fate of the universe on the line. They're about to be called the greatest team of all time to zero points. LeBron, and, and by the way, iced the game on the free throw line. LeBron did, right? Mm -hmm. LeBron will have, for the second time, performed a miracle. Like when Muhammad Ali beat George Foreman 10 years after he beat Sonny Liston. That kind of miracle. And I think, given his closeness to MJ at his peak, if he were to do that, Guys like you and me have to sit down and have a talk. We have to reevaluate some things. Also, guys, in just layman's terms, we go from a one ring difference, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five rings to six rings. So clearly closing the gap right there if he got it done again. Let me bring in somebody who has followed LeBron's career closer than maybe anybody, and that would be my guy, Brian Windhorse. Windy, do we got you? There you are. Uh, good to see you, Windy. Thank you for joining the conversation. I want you to dive in on this. Where are you? Can LeBron pass MJ if he pulls off the repeat this season? So you really have to qualify this conversation about whether you want to talk about nuance or not, because if you don't want to talk about nuance, Jordan 6-0 in the finals, and there's really nothing to talk about. But Jordan didn't operate in an era with super teams. LeBron has had to navigate this era with super teams. And if you look at LeBron's career, a lot of it has been like steering down that river. You know, he couldn't overcome the Boston Celtics, so he had to make a maneuver to create his own super team in Miami. When that super team went south with Dwayne Wade had knee issues, he had to go create a super team in, uh, in Cleveland. Then that super team was overwhelmed by the super team that was created by the Warriors. So he had to make another maneuver and go to the Lakers to try to create another super team. Now, in his way, is another super team with the Nets, which he will try to have to scale that wall with all the other things that he's dealing with. That is a reality that did not exist in Michael Jordan's world. It doesn't mean that Michael Jordan wouldn't have created, you know, had, um, had scaled those walls. He probably would have. He probably would have maneuvered around. But for Chicago Bulls ownership that didn't want to pay salaries, it would have been a hell of a lot tougher than kind of the stuff that LeBron had to go through. So LeBron has had to climb that challenge that Jordan didn't. And um, having to do that and still reaching 10 finals despite those challenges, I think should count for something in the argument. But again, if you're only going to look at the 6-0, and we really can't have a discussion. We, to, to have this squarely, in my view, you have to be willing to take into account all of the other factors well, that were going on in the NBA around them. Here, here's the only thing, though, Brian. Uh, there, there was a big three 
in Boston, that is true. It was created, and he had to respond to that. But LeBron is really the creator of the super-duper team because none of the big three in Boston were a top three player in the league when they got together. LeBron was the best or second best player in the league, and Dwayne Wade was in the top three or four, and they had Chris Bosh. That's who invented the super team, LeBron James. Michael Jordan was on a super team. Not his fault, but it is his fault because he's Michael Jordan. That's why it was a super team. You take him off, it's just a great team, right? Or a good team. Um, but people forget, when he got back from the layoff, he didn't win that year because he had, like, played 17 games. He didn't have his basketball legs. But the following season, the Orlando Magic won 60 games. They had Shaq and Penny, not to mention Grant and Nick Anderson and Dennis Scott and all those guys, a 60-game team that had just, with a, with a prime Shaq and Penny that, and, and other good, real good players that had just been to the finals. He swept them, swept them. The Seattle Supersonics were, if they weren't a super team, they were the next thing to it. They had multiple high-level all-stars and multiple high-level starters on the same team, which is why they won 64 games that year. They didn't go seven games. It's a little bit overstated that Michael jo his first title came against the Lakers, right? Didn't Magic win the MVP that year? The Lakers. What'd they get it? In four or five? I'm already forgetting. It might have been five games. It's not like, like, if you look at the Utah Jazz that Jordan used to bounce, how much different are they than the Spurs?